Hello, this is Reza Rat from Redicat. Uh, recently, I have done a presentation in one of the conferences and that was about uh, building the analytics team in this new era of technology, which I call it golden uh, analytics uh, technology. Uh, and that was not a technical, uh, technical presentation, unlike many other presentations that I do. This was totally um, not technical. And I thought it would be good uh, and beneficial for everyone to learn about it. So I'm going to do it in two different videos. I'm going to first in this video talk about overall how to build the analytics team. In another video I'm going to talk about different roles within that team. Uh, so let's start with this one and learn about different aspects of uh, the things that you need to make an analytics team, a data analytics team, to be a successful team. Let's go and check it out. Um, okay, so, um, why do I call this uh, a era of um, um, a golden era of a technology because uh, in this uh, in these days we have technologies that help uh, a lot in building a data analytics solution and specifically talking about Microsoft technologies we have Power BI which is a um, 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 analytical um, self-service solution that does not only do visualization but also do the um, getting data transforming it modeling it writing calculations uh, all of that and now these days we also have Microsoft Fabric which not um, which does not only cover Power BI but it also covers uh, areas of data transformation ETL orchestration process data science data warehousing data engineering real-time analytics plus Power BI. It's like a full spectrum of everything you need in an analytical solution, fully satisfied experience, plus the fact that we also have Copilot across different er areas of this. And all of these together plays uh, an important role in making analytical solutions much easier to implement. So in this era of technology, how do we go and build an analytical team? Uh, so one of the first thing uh, that building analytical team is, um, um, I mean, um, some of the other concepts that are important is first to have a goal for the analytical team. Uh, any project needs a goal to get them working. Peoples and roles, which I would mostly talk about it in a separate video, but I'll mention it in this video like a very quick overview. Soft skills that everyone in the team would need regardless of their roles. Um, and then the size of the team, how would you define what is the size of the team uh, and all of that uh, information about it. The, the culture would, re, uh, would be related to everything else. Based on the culture in your organization, you might find different team size, you might find different skills. Uh, standards and templates to work with is another important aspect to get the whole team working together uh, and of course the training to get all of that to work together. So let's go and talk about this. The first thing, the most important thing from my point of view is, um, is the goal of, uh, of the team. So I, I've been working with a lot of uh, customers uh, as a consultant helping them to build their analytical, analytical solution uh, a better solution and what I found works best for uh, for the customers uh, is that when they have a goal for the analytical team to be um, related to the business, what the business actually need, what is the requirement of the business, what type of um, help the business can get from this analytical project, not just doing analytical project for the sake of analytic, analytical project. Uh, for example, we might spend, let's say, four years gathering all the data from all different systems, bringing it into one place, and then, um, and then by the time that we have all of these data integrated, the business already has spent so much money on this project that they, they are not willing to invest anything more on getting more analytics on top of it. The goal should be business centric. Let's say if you are doing a sales system, the goal might be um, like this information somehow helps us to identify do we need a new branch in this place or, or we just continue with the existing branch that we have or what changes we make in the product lines that we have, all of those kind of things, right? 
so goals should be business related and that also defines that we need the roles that can help in building that um, that uh, goal and uh, going towards that goal the other thing is the analytical team itself which I'll talk about that in another video in full details but here just giving you a glan um, glance of these these are some of the roles that we need and depending on the size of business uh, some of these roles might not be needed some of these roles uh, the size of the analytical team some of these roles might be combined into one your data scientist data engineer might be one person your administrator and deployment manager might be one person uh, but in some um, in some analytical team you might have multiple ETL developer things like that all of these are roles that have their own um, hard skill requirement um, some of them are technical roles such as uh, data related roles some of them are not technical roles they are more like a business related roles such as business analyst and project sponsor uh, we are going to talk about it in another video so if you are interested in that make sure you check the other video about it um, the culture in the organization is really important. The culture defines the way that, um, that the analytical team work together and also work with the, with the rest of the organization. For example, if the culture in the organization is that you have different departments and you have business analysts in those departments who are willing to um, to work with the data, like they probably already using Excel or Power BI to uh, to connect to the data data sources and get some information out of it. So if you have that kind of uh, culture in your organization, it might be beneficial that you go and build uh, like a core semantic model or a data set that those people go and use it, and they would also help you in in reducing some of the workload on the BI team and as a result the analytical team might be less um, centralized and more spread out and based on that you might come with some governance um, definition and saying that for example these are standards to use this these are the medallion architecture I would go and use all of those things so depending on the culture everything might be different some organization might say well we do not have self-service users everything has to be written created um, some might even say we want to get um, external vendors to come and build the bi system for us and we just use the result of it right so depending on the culture a lot of things might change the scope of the project the scope of the whole team the budget related to that and and everything like that the size of the team, uh, one of the main important thing to define it is of course the, the budget for this project. This is like a project, the analytical team, the analytical um, department is a project. So this project requires a budget. Defining that budget is always one of the most important things you have to do. You have to give the um, audience, which in this case might be board of directors, CXO level, some understanding of what is the benefit of this analytics. Because if you ask them what is the budget for analytics, they would just say like as, as uh, minimum as possible, right? Uh, you have to come up with some sort of information. For example, one of the projects that we have done for a customer helped them to, um, to come up with the optimal uh, point that if um, like they had a lead time uh, for some um, kind of approval process and then we checked based on some data science algorithms with R and things like that and came up with a different lead time for that approval process that if they have changed that uh, in the past year they have saved like half a million dollar in their expenditure right so something like this can be a good um, uh, can be a good information to give to your users so that they can get the value out of that analytics analytical project when they know that for example this is going to save them this much money then they can come and say well I'm ready to invest this much on this project um, so the budget is important the deadlines are important like how long uh, how much time you have to uh, meet that again the culture of the organization is also important do you have help from self-service users or not 
um, how much the team is already under um, under the workload um, and uh, and how is the bottleneck of all the requests coming who is available who is not what is the skill set things like that many of these would define the size of the team sometimes the bi team basically might be just one person in the whole organization sometimes it might be a team of 50 people uh, and all of these factors are important to define the size of that team uh, as a team, uh, any team requires some sorts of standards to work together and some of these standards are um, um, guidelines that the team work together in a better format such as some creating some kind of templates, Power BI templates for example in the visualization side of things, creating themes, sharing it with others, uh, having some kind of naming conventions, uh, a standard set of rules and tests guide for uh, defining Italian architecture saying that this is the gold standard, this is the bronze, this is the silver standard. If you have self-service users using your data, coming up with some kind of definitions and catalog of information, a wiki page showing some of the information available, um, a lot of things like that. Meetings, uh, stand-ups, you may not use let's say, let's say agile methodology so you may not have like a stand-up meetings but it is uh, stand-ups every day but it is important to have regular meetings to get the team working together. These are some of the things that usually a uh, team leader and architect of the team together they work together to come up with some sorts of standards that help um, um, the whole team and as a result it leads to a better outcome for the analytical project. Training is another important aspect um, different roles have different skill sets and they require different training agenda. For example, your data scientist would require a different training uh, agenda than the data visualizer. Data visualizers need to learn more about art of visualization, making visualization um, totally effective visualization, whereas uh, someone like a, like a data scientist, data scientist requires to learn more about different algorithms in machine learning, how these algorithms can uh, have their parameters set, all of those kind of things, right? So it is important to have an agenda for each of these and if in case one of your team members is stepping from one role to another role, you have a training agenda that says, well, you are going to this role, so this is going to be things that you need to learn. These are not necessarily in-person classroom training. These can be also some sorts of like video training, uh, like a playlist of um, some of the YouTube videos that you have watched and seen it is useful. Um, some of the blog articles. Uh, it's good to come up with like a, I don't know, like a SharePoint page, for example, a SharePoint list of all of these uh, items and the whole team have access to that so that training can be like a training platform that people can go and use uh, and it is important that you define this based on the role like for example even the end user in your organization would require some training but the training that you do for end user is totally different than the training that you do for your core model developers. I have a separate video specifically on this subject so make sure to go and check it out. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, how the AI agents, uh, things such as ChatGPT, Copilot and things like that would help. Um, should you use it? Should you not use it? Uh, my suggestion would be um, use it. Don't try to um, escape from it or fight it and say we are not going to use it. Uh, it is useful, uh, but on the other hand side, don't try to give everything to ChatGPT or Copilot and expect a final outcome. It is a Copilot. It is not pilot. So one of the things that you need to know is that this is there to help you. The, uh, the result that you get from the co-pilot might not be the best result. It is uh, still important that your uh, expert in the team uh, evaluate it and make sure that this is the right result, this is the right output. It can help you to get to uh, some areas. It makes the whole team more productive, so it is good to use it. Uh, uh, you can enable it for the team to use it, such as uh, features such as Copilot in Fabric, Copilot in Teams, Copilot in GitHub, all those places can be helpful. And you can also learn about ways that you can customize that Copilot, uh, things such as Copilot Studio or AI skills that we have in Fabric, these can be helpful to customize that experience. 
And the other thing is the soft skills that the whole team needs. And I, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the soft skills part itself. So these are things that the entire team need regardless of the role that they have. They do require some hard skills that I explained in the other video about each role. Uh, but in terms of soft skill, everyone needs to know these soft skills. For example, communication is the key. Uh, you cannot say that, for example, it is a developer role, this role is usually like 9 to 5 behind the computer, it's not going to communicate with the end users, so communication is not important. That is not the case. You definitely need to have communication skills. This communication can be communicating with your peers in the team, it can be also communicating uh, with stakeholders, with the users, it's not, there is not, um, like usually we have like business analyst and team leader and things like that who would manage a lot of communication, but sometimes they are not available, sometimes they are busy, so the developers might need to communicate somehow with the user directly. It is important to have that skill set to be able to explain what is happening, discuss if there's any change in the requirement, any risk that might be available, uh, and how to resolve it. Communication is, is key, really important. Uh, one slide that I really like is this one. I've seen first time this presented in one of the Ignite presentation at one uh, somewhere uh, that was talking about when you are a technical person, it's a really important ability to have this uh, ability to change your conversation from technical conversation to business conversation so that a user can understand you, turn the dial to business side and talk with them and then turn the dial to technical and talk with your technical technical users. This is a really important ability that everyone in the team usually is important to, uh, to learn about it. Uh, having the can-do attitude is another important aspect. Uh, you want to work with a team that they are all uh, working together. They have this, um, this um, mindset that I can do this. Even, for example, if your role is not programming, but for some specific case you need to write a couple of lines of program, you can at least do something about it. Even if you cannot write it yourself, you can work with someone, uh, get their help and get this job done, right? It's not something that you have to only stick into the framework that you are comfortable with. Sometimes you need to step out of your comfort zone, sometimes your project demands that and uh, having that attitude helped the entire team and the entire project, of course. Uh, and of course, presentation skill is another important uh, thing. Everyone in the team requires to have some kind of presentation skills. This might be sometimes just talking with your colleagues um, behind, the, behind the desk, behind your monitor, talking about it, showing them something. Or sometimes it might be presenting this to your users in a boardroom. Sometimes this might be even bigger, like presenting it to a bigger group of uh, audience. You, you need to practice that skill. This is a skill that not only helps you in this type of job, it helps you everywhere. Presentation is a soft skill that everyone needs to to practice and it is an important uh, thing to learn. Um, so I hope you um, enjoyed this um, presentation uh, and this video. Uh, I, as I said, I have another video talking about different roles and the uh, hard skills that each role would need. I encourage you to go and check that out as well. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. Until the next video, bye. Thank you.